So this is a Ditch Witch R40, uh, and it's mine. I got it for free. We say, you know, nothing ever really is for free, and it's technically not. Um, this was my uncle's, who is now passed, and uh, we did some work about a year ago, year and a half ago, getting his bulldozer out that was abandoned, um, you know, since he was sick, kind of. And as a return, kind of for payment on putting some effort and a little bit of money into that job, I was left with this. A year ago, this was abandoned, you know, just 50 yards away in the weeds. Um, there's a really good video on that if you guys want to watch it. Since then, we've kind of gotten it out and gotten it running, but it just needs, you know, like that last 15, 20 percent of work to be done um, to turn it into like a useful machine again where we can just fire it up and go out and do some trenching with. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to load it up on the trailer. We are going to bring it home and we are going to see if the free ditch witch is worth anything um, because we actually have some trenching that we need to do uh, right down that fairway if you see. So my name's Tyler. You guys are watching Diesel and this should be a fun one. Um, today we're going to fix up the free ditch witch. Could have been out of gas, that could have been the problem. Burrs everywhere. Yeah. His mic broke. He dropped his mic yesterday and then I got ran over by the bulldozer, but he just said some days he needs to be censored and yeah. That's very true. But he's dying, he can't he can't talk. So because we can never do anything normal, we're using the Jeep. I brought Luke with me, and the truck doesn't have a car seat, so I should tow all right, we'll see. All right, loaded and chained. Pretty happy. Can't get those out now. Um, and then we got a few extra parts we gotta go pick up. And then this is a brand new chain that I ordered. I just had it shipped to my uncle's, because it's freight. So. Let's see how she touches. Oh, oh no. Uh -oh. All right, we made it home okay. And it actually pulled like a dream. I don't know if you guys know, but that is a diesel. Um, one issue, chewed up a tire, I think just because it was old. And I had to change that in the side I-75. That's no fun. Um, so let's get it off the trailer and get it into the garage. See over here, we're surrounded by our people. Let's go see what's in this hole. Yeah, nothing cool. All right, so here she is. Safe and sound in the diesel garage, um, right next to everything else I don't have room for. Uh, so let's just take a walk around a little bit and tell you guys a story. So like I said, it's a R40 uh, Ditch Witch. 
It's got a VG4HD uh, V4 air-cooled Wisconsin gas engine in it. Um, it probably weighs about 35 to 3,800 pounds. Um, Four-wheel drive, front-wheel steer only, and not on here right now is a like a big old trenching boom with a six inch wide chain for trenching. So this unit will do probably a six inch wide trench, um, about six feet deep. So it's great for drain tile, electrical service, irrigation lines, water lines, whatever you wanna do. Um, it's really a pretty useful machine. So the story goes, uh, my uncle has some property uh, in Northern Michigan and it's about a mile to his cabin from the road. So he was going to potentially trench in an underground electrical service, um, and that's very expensive. So he was really into bartering and buying and selling stuff. So I don't know how he came across this, but it was kind of torn apart in a box. A lot of the parts were missing, misplaced, things like that. So they actually, uh, you know, kind of put it together. It's got a brand new machine shop built engine in it, um, you know, maybe a couple hundred hours on it. And we got it together and it ran pretty good. We used a little bit around the golf course, uh, but it always needed a chain. And the chain is the most expensive part on this thing. It was about probably three grand ship for everything I needed for the chain. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty solid unit. It needs wiring, it's got some hydraulic leads. It pops out of gear between the trench and the gear. Um, my crowd control, they call it, it sees. This is how you do your forward speed uh, when you're actually trenching. It doesn't have a seat, you know just needs a little stuff like that doesn't have a cutting edge on the blade the tires and rims this side is okay this side is not okay um, doesn't have a battery hold down probably just needs fluids change and stuff like that so it needs a decent amount of work but really it runs and it drives which is you know kind of a far cry from some of the stuff that I've gotten in recently um, so again I kind of bartered with them for working on the bulldozer. We got that KS450 out. I rebuilt the injection pump on it. Um, and this was kind of sitting homeless. And we said, hey, you know, would you be interested? And they said, yeah, no problem. You know, take it. So now I find myself with this on my hands. And I can't really just, like, not do anything with it, right? Um, we do have a little bit of use for it around the golf course. So we'll see. Let's fix it up and uh, put it to work. I don't know. The thing about a machine like this is I think it actually could make you a little bit of money. You could probably charge a buck or two a foot for trenching. It's easy to move, um, and it's simple. It's just kind of a one-man operation, right? So let's see, you know, if I want to kind of get out of my full-time job and do this uh, full-time, then I'm going to need extra ways to make money, and this seems like a great way to make some extra money. And knock the big stuff off. Let's pull it out and power wash it up before we do anything. so it turned out pretty clean actually I'm um, pretty happy with it and the best part is now that when we make a walk around and an assessment of this machine we can instantly tell if we have leaks um, it's easier to get in and see if bearings are in play uh, sloppy you know what I mean things like that and to be honest with you didn't even leave that big of a mess in the driveway so a couple things um, I know it pops out of gear when we use it so if you look the shift collar right here this basically changed the output of the transmission from um, combining the drive shaft to the sprocket. So I'm going to put it back. That ties your drive shaft to this belt. And then that belt drive goes into that right angle. It's like a hypoid gearbox, like an axle. And that in turn drives our trencher chain down there. So you can see there, it's pretty sloppy. I mean, it's, you know, it's not bad. So let's tear all that off. We're probably going to want to put new belts on anyways. Bill said that he thinks the output on that is a little loose, so we gotta check that out. So I think we're gonna end up, even though it's only a couple bolts, removing kind of this entire drivetrain um, post-processing section of it. 
It's got a couple weird hydraulic lines going on here. Like that's a copper line because there's supposed to be hard lines steel through there. So probably might want to run some new fuel line because we got copper. Um, clean the fuel tank out. Need a little bit of wiring. It'd be nice to have an hour meter. And we probably could have either a voltmeter or an oil pressure gauge up there. Uh, we have no alternator. We got to look into that. Um, again, we kind of got some hacked up fuel line stuff there. Uh, it's a carburetor, so we probably just need to take the carburetor apart and clean it and get like a, a gasket kit for it, you know, because who knows what's in there. This governor rod is like rusted through and it's bent, so I can't actually idle it down that much because it kind of goes over center. Um, so we probably just need to get a new linkage rod there and we can probably just make one of those up. This thing's flopping around down there plug wires are pretty pathetically ran. Um, my dad did go through the ignition for us, so we're good there. Up front, we've got an oil leak right here. That looks a little suspect, and it is leaking, you can tell. Uh, but we do have an oil leak down here. Then the brakes, so that's a live look at our brake master cylinder, and that's probably just water. Probably need to do something about at least two of these rims, because I know that was just sitting down there in the weeds forever. And that's why that's so rusty. Although I don't think it's beyond repair. I think we can just get them blasted and painted. And that one too. So I've already gotten prices. I can get an alternator. Um, this complete jack shaft with bearings, although it's used, um, but it's allegedly in really good shape. And a crowd control um, for 300 bucks shipped um, from Maverick, the place that I got the trencher chain from. So I think I'm gonna go ahead with that. So I think what I'll do is I'll rip that jack shaft out. I'll check out the 90 degree gearbox. Um, and then we can just kind of start going at it. We'll get a couple of lines and things like that. But time and money are of the importance because I do not need it to turn into another year long restoration. I got the VH Marvel. There's a little bit here, I don't know. So we can get a rebuild kit coming for that. And I was dumping it out and it looked like pink stuff was coming out the bottom. So I know it hasn't been cleaned out in a while. Should vacuum that out too. So I got a, like a rebuild seal kit coming for this too. And that's about exactly what we thought we would see. Float does look okay. That pin is sealed in. The gasket has seen better days. So, just kind of a reminder that it did sit for however many years before we got it out a while ago. So I'm probably going to tear this guy down the rest of the way. I should have everything I need coming. And then we'll put in the ultrasonic, but I kind of wanted to show you guys that, what shape she was in. All right, so the next thing is, uh, I can't let the lid get off this can of worms, right? So a couple of these tires and rims are pretty bad. Um, this tire's flat. However, I don't hate the tires on this thing. They still have a decent amount of tread. Um, and new tires are at like 250 a piece, so. See the things are very close. Oh wow, oh my God. Oh. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's not really. Like if you have a bigger tire and you can hit more sideways. It works so much better because the tire is so small and struggling. That was miserable. Um, only three more to go. This is not going to come out. Right, let's try an easy out. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. I think I had this upside down. Now you can see that. I'll shove the needle valve and see it. So then they're saying uh, 1930 seconds on this. Oh, from the bowl gasket surface to the far edge of the float. Let's see, I mean, we're right at like 20, 30 seconds. I don't really see a need to change that. Just real quick before I close this up. You guys can see this thing sat in water for a while. It's kind of rotted. Okay. So now I gotta get this little throttle linkage arm out of here that's seized in there. And instead, I just broke it off. All right, that's gonna take a while to recover from. I'll probably try and drill it out, I guess, but I don't have a 632 tab, so. In the meantime, I have a fuel pump and some spark plugs that we can put on. like this back piece actually stays with the 
engine and the fuel pump is just the front piece. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna run a new fuel line from the tank. So, so this is the right thread here. So I'll just take this with me and figure that out because when we were running it last fall, it was actually starving. Not sure if it was the like car was dirty, tank is dirty, fuel line or whatever. So we'll just go through it all. need to wait get our car back on and we can do our fuel line so we've got a few leaks down there and then I don't know what's going on with these lines because these are hydraulic pressure lines right here and that's copper what looks like to a compression fitting and copper what looks like to a compression fitting so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of gut all that stuff out and we'll see what we got and what we need to replace all right, so here's what we got going on here. The one with the zip tie is the down pressure for the blade, and the other one is one of the tilt sides. So this line back here was one of the original hard lines, I believe, that was just broken and left. So this is the angle for the blade. So it starts with, I believe what looks like quarter inch NPT. This was like a three piece hard line originally. So they put a soft hose in here. So we need to go from quarter inch NPT all the way up to, we're going to get rid of this, you know, we're just going to do all soft line all the way up to three eighths inch NPT. And I will get a measurement on that. Then the other one is the same, three eighths NPT, had a chunk of copper in the middle, comes out. So this one terminated with this flare fitting, but if you look up here, they have a couple of them adapted. So this was the original hard line. And then this is for the new soft lines. So I'll just spin one of these out and get two more of these adapters. Should be a pretty simple. I just gotta get my lengths right. Um, and then it should just be like the same, you know, hose just, honestly, the lengths will probably be about the same. Um, so should I do two hoses, just the two that were leaking? Or should I do four and just replace all of them? Jack shaft's coming out anyways, so we'll wait to that, but let's check out this gearbox. Boy. That is not good. Right there. That end doesn't look so bad. But regardless, that gearbox has got to come out. So use those things probably fetch like well over a grand a good gearbox like that. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if a used one is in the cards. Um, I think regardless, we're stuck with this one. So that's kind of disheartening to see how bad that is. It's oil filled and I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't think we knew that when we used to run it. So if you run it without oil, but no one knows to check the oil in it, right? Ay, ay, ay. Not good. It smells like gas in my garage. And I'm like, man, I don't know why. Apparently, apparently yesterday I took the fuel line off and that sucker's just been leaking the whole time. So. That's the strainer on the sediment boiler. It's got some stuff on it. We'll clean her out. There.
looking good for that gearbox. I think we've got it all apart, other than that little drive gear box. We just gotta figure out if we can put it back together. So this could be a showstopper right here. Because like, it's big time heft. Um, and like I said, a used one's probably gonna cost me a couple grand. So it all depends on how the gears look. So it's actually like a hypoid gear set, just like a rear X on a truck. Um, and I'm perfectly comfortable rebuilding that. But if the gears are trashed, then the whole thing's trashed. I just took the brake caliper off. We'll take the brake master cylinder off too. I already, sh so I already showed you guys that. That U joint's toast. So up here, that's just a slip splat on there. I mean, I'd probably do both U joints on the drive shaft, but the output on the gear case, I know I can't hold the camera steady, but if you guys can see that, that's a little loose. Our brakes are completely destroyed. So the pinion, so the pinion on both the axles feels tight. Um, but at this point, I'm kind of wondering if I should just drop that gearbox out and clean that up and check that out too. That's basically like our transfer case. And then I gotta figure out how to get that drive shaft out. Probably we'll start with taking that off, I guess. What I thought was a free trencher is probably a free motor, two axles, and I think a good trans, but I'm not so sure about that right now. This just isn't making any sense. get the drive shaft out. Everything on this is toast. I feel defeated. I need a quick win and some bench space so I can start tearing that stuff down. If it comes out, it comes out. If not, we're just gonna cut it off and we'll just make a new one. Let's see. Yeah. It's a little off centered, but I was honestly thinking too, I could just tap it out to like a bigger size and then, uh, you know, helicoil it. Let's see. All right, I'm thinking we can run a tap to that and should be good to go.
that will help me in a few places. So I wanted to get this shaft out and rebush that right there, but you gotta like take the trans out or something. I'm not sure if this was originally a bolt in and someone welded it on. That's kind of what it looks like maybe. So that's a bummer. Um, but now that I have that off, we can probably drop that gearbox out and just clean that up quick. Um, but we still gotta get the drive shaft out. So if you look down there, I found one more set screw. So let's take that out and then see if we can actually get that front drive shaft. Oh. Oh boy. I consider myself lucky. For how long? It's a new day. 
I think I'm sick, but that U joint needs to come out now. I basically got it. I got this cap through, but I gotta get that end one just out a little bit. It should pop right out. Great. Victorious. Oh wow, what a great day. Way better than yesterday. Probably clean that up a little bit, but at least we can get some U-joints on their way. Actually worked. All right, look at that. Now the only thing I think I would still like to get out. I gotta pop these loose. I gotta pop these U joints loose, even though it doesn't feel bad. I don't know. Maybe I'll just send it. But you gotta take that whole jack shaft out to replace those. So I probably should just do those. And then the only other thing, man, this is sweet. Everything looks pretty good. The only other thing is if I want to get this out and re-bush this, then somehow we need to lift the trans up. Um, but the motor's just four bolts, so I could pop that loose. I feel like there was other stuff. So I guess I'll clean some stuff up. I got a couple other things to do. Yeah, I'd take this crowd control off and replace that because this is actually seized. I want to take that off. I'll clean that off real nice. Regrease the collar and everything. Um, and then I'd still like to get the steering wheel and this dash off so I can mount that hydraulic stuff back there, but we'll see. I think next, uh, let me clean up and then we can throw some stuff out on the bench and we can tear into some stuff and kind of see what we got before we can start putting stuff back together. All right, so that little guy is actually a 540. Kind of an odd size. Those threads look pretty good actually, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a nut on either side of this on the little linkage arm here. Um, so that way if anything ever happens to these threads, I can just tighten her down.
always a battle. All right, so now we can measure it up. So when you're replacing a U-joint, you just measure what size it is. And then like Spicer and all those guys, they have uh, charts or tables or whatever. So our cap size is 1.124, probably 1.125, should be one and an eighth. And then the other thing you measure is the distance between the caps. So we're looking at like 2.625, so two and uh, five eighths probably. So one and an eighth and two and five eighths. So we can put it in the chart and then we'll order some U-joints up. All right, so I got all the U-joints apart, including the ones off the back of the trans. That was fun because I had to do that. I would like to get this apart. Remember, I snapped that bolt off, but I'm going to have to noodle on that one for a while. Maybe I'll let her soak in some penetrating oil. So the next thing is this. This is just like a little, I guess you could call it a transfer case. We have either our transmission power coming in here or we have the hydraulic motor on the crowd control and then this just outputs the front and rear drive shaft. So the reason I took this off is just because this is real slopped out um, and it's dirty. So let me clean it up a little bit first, best I can. I'll probably power wash this and I guess I'll do this one at the same time so I'll clean up a little more and then spray them down. Alright I got it cleaned up. before I power washed it. So that's a little bit concerning. And this bearing is toast. Other than that, um, it really feels pretty good. It doesn't have a ton of play in it. So I think what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna see if I can get some seals for it. Pop those in and run it. So this should come right off, I think. Tapered roller bearings in there and some rust. So we'll see. I mean, oh, and then this is probably a shimmed gasket which needs to be replaced. We'll see. I mean, this stuff is pretty resilient. Oh, that 
that make you feel? Oh boy. So the first thing we can do is pop this pulley up. That's a taper lock on there. Okay. Pinion looks just as bad. I broke a couple, I think, but these bolts hold it to the ditch switch. Wow. Beautiful. First of all, I see absolutely zero bearing. I don't know if you guys see that too. <laughs> this thing might be chooched to be on repair. Wow. -y. This side has a bearing. <laughs> oh, that's the cage right there. Wow. Well, I'm gonna try and get this out, um, but that's a super bummer. Probably time to look for a replacement right hand gearbox. Super bummer because you know, like I had said before, I think, uh, the place I talked to, Maverick, that I got the chain from, he said a good used gearbox they're getting a grand for. Um, probably at least a grand. I mean, he might even said two grand or something. Um, and that could be a uh, showstopper for a ditch witch, such as this vintage, so. We'll have to see what's going on. I'll get it cleaned up, and, and we'll make a final assessment on it, but I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy about running what I see right now. I'm looking for ditch witch parts. He said, go past the combine. There's two combines up there. Past all the engines. That's a 671 right there. And lo and behold, I think that's a ditch witch. Now I gotta get to it somehow. This is the coolest place I've ever been to in my life. It's like Disneyland for guys like me. Oh, there's a Detroit. Oh, I see Vermeer. And there's a ditch witch right there. See the orange? I don't think it's gonna have what we need, unfortunately. Look at the trees in this thing. There's the gearbox. And unfortunately, it's not the same one. It's got a universal joint driving into the front, which I actually like that. I actually like that design better because you don't have the pulley putting all the force on it, but I believe it's a different style gearbox. Super bummer. But it's still really cool to come out here and look at all this stuff. Look at the old Euclid stuff. 6V71. Allison transmission. To that. There's another big, that's an 8V. Look at that big old boy. Big generator. I have no clue what that is. It looks like it has spark plugs on the side almost. Check out this big boy. Vermeer. It's got a nice little Ford 172 gasser in it. Big old backhoe, a blade. Articulated too, that's kind of cool. How the hell do I get out of here? 
It's like a good project for Diesel Creek. Went off the ditch witch for a while. Uh, I just got the four track it kind of wrapped up. So if you guys want to see a video on that, make sure you check it out. I'll put a link up here. Looks pretty sweet though. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I always come and go on projects. Um, so on the ditch witch, I got my hydraulic hoses and my adapters for those. Uh, we still got to do fuel lines. We got to run the hydraulic hoses. Got to finish up hooking up the alternator. But the big stuff is, on my driveline, U joints, uh, drive chain, tractor chain, everything like that, right? So I did get a used gearbox from Maverick, um, 750, but we'll see. I'll tear it apart and see how it is. Feels pretty good actually. So that's a relief. 